You're listening to the Homeboys Podcast, recorded in our Indiana office and with combined 40 years of experience. Here's your hosts, Clint and Scott. Hello, real estate investors. You're with the Homeboys and the Homeboys Podcast. We thank you for joining us today. We have a very exciting topic, finding the right real estate market to invest in. Real quick, before we get started, see that subscribe button below? Give it a little tap. We'd love to expand our audience and continue to, to grow this show and always give great real estate, uh, sound real estate advice to you. Um, as always, I'm here with my delightful co-host, Mr. Scott Adams. Hey, buddy. How are you? I couldn't be better. It's, Good. Uh, it's a fun time of year. We're, uh, we're talking about uh, real estate markets and which to invest in. Our real estate market's pretty popular right now because the entire NCAA tournament is happening in our city, which has got a little bit of a, a buzz going on. You probably I didn't, didn't even, even know that. Know. I had no idea. You literally go I home and know. stay in, in your bubble yeah. nonstop. Don't well, we you? don't have TV, you know, so I, I just don't, and I don't, I'm not really that into And you just don't into, talk to anybody and <laughs> realize that sports. 20 miles down the road, <laughs> yeah. like the entire NCAA tournament's going on? I, I guess I should have known because I'm on a text chain with my brother and my uncle and they were talking mm-hmm. about it, but Indy never came up, that part. You know? Well, I'm an enormous college basketball fan, so yeah. I've been glued to the TV. Indianapolis has got a, you know, a, a bright spotlight on it right now because of the NCAA yeah. tournament and because of COVID going on, they, the NCAA decided... To keep it here in Indianapolis, which is what kind of makes our market a little unique because we have a big draw for, from our sports teams and whatnot. We sure. can talk a little bit about that, but more specific, we're talking about specific markets where real estate investors would invest in these specific markets. We've talked about location before. Right. This is driving home more specific areas where location, location, location kind of picked out areas within a market and stay away from high crime and, you know, right. schools. And you know, we touched on that. This is more driving home the actual markets themselves, like Indianapolis, Memphis, Cincinnati, Kansas City, you name That's it. That's right. You, you still have the number one factor, which is location, location, location within each market. But a lot of people don't know where to start. What market do I start in? And, um, you know, this, this has always been easy for us because you've got things like Inman News and Yahoo Finance, you know, consistently calling our market, you know, one of the best markets for single or the best market for single family rentals for so long now. Um, and, and because we are focused on this market, our market, we don't really talk about the other markets much, but we wanted to kind of explain to folks how to pick a market. If it's not Indiana, Indiana Indianapolis, there's a lot of other good markets out there. And what are those factors that you look for? What is it that makes Inman News and Yahoo Finance and Forbes call cities like Indianapolis the best place to invest? And we can touch on that and you know, kind of be specific to our market. I think it's transferable to other markets to invest in. You know, We're very strong on our market. Um, it's not just because the real estate mind of Scott Adams lives within this market. There's lots of other things that are out there that are very appealing. Um, but I think that it's also important to note out, you know, here in the beginning, as always, we like boring. Yep. Um, and, yep. you know, a lot of the things we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about really four main factors that you watch for. And all of them equate to boring. It does. You know, and which let's just start with factor number one you look for, which is a consistent market. A lot of people don't know what a consistent market means. Um, explain to folks in terms of indie what we mean by a consistent market. Well, again, you know, goes back goes back to boring. Um, but consistency means that you don't see the peaks and valleys of other real estate markets. We talk about the Bay Area a lot within this office and on this show, quite frankly, because we have a huge concentration of clients from the Bay Area that are customers of ours. Um you know, you see when the real estate market is really hot, say like in a San Francisco, I mean, it, it can go up 50%, 60%. I mean, it's the, the numbers are crazy, but what goes up must come down. So in bad markets, you see the same, you know, go down and it's really challenging. It's purely a spec play in, in markets that have 
uh, more volatility where you're trying to time the market. And we are not trying to time the market. We've always been very conservative investors. Indianapolis and its consistency is one of the things that brings a lot of investors because of the consistency. You don't see those peaks and valleys that you see San Francisco, uh, New York City, you know, some of the other you sure. know, you know, very large, you know, large markets. Let's clarify, too, that, you know, when we're speaking of investing in single family residential real estate, that we're talking about long term buy and holds. That is the that is the formula that works. That is the formula that, you know, that people have done for so long and repeated over and over to build wealth. Now, that doesn't mean that people can't go out there and speculate and all of that. However, we're looking at everything through the lens of the best way to invest, which is long-term real estate holds to build wealth. So, you know, those ups and downs and trying to time the market. And if, if you have to exit a property and it's a down market time, they can just kill your whole entire plan. So fast, you know, fast. So if you're in a consistent market um, that, you know, especially if it beats inflation like Indianapolis does and a few others do um, as far as appreciation, meaning it appreciates faster than inflation does. So your dollars gain value just sitting there in the house. As long as you're in one of those, if you ever have an emergency, um, we had a a client call the other day, his daughter's getting uh, married. Congratulations. And he needed to sell, Mm -hmm. you know, one of his properties to pay for the wedding. Sure, Life happens. We understand that. So you don't want to be in one of those markets when life happens and you're at the bottom and you're losing, you lose all of your, you've lost all of your, your gains. And I have a little bit of experience with that early in my career. Um, You know, I got involved in some pre-construction condos in the panhandle in Florida. Right. Um, And it was just so volatile. We had had some success um, early on. Me and my my family, my brother, right. they were, were investing in this. Had some early success, and then wanted to do multiple, you know, units. And the economy, you know, shifted. Right. And we were basically, you had to put a down payment down to hold it, and then once construction got to a certain level, then you had to close on it. Right. And we walked away from our down payment money because right. the market had shifted so much. It just wasn't worth overpaying for, for a condo. And those, that's, that's part of, I really, really value that lesson yeah. because what we do is almost all here in Indiana and very conservative. And why take that risk if we've got all of this opportunity in our own backyard to be conservative yeah. and to grow wealth, like you say, which is what we preach. I find it interesting that you and I both have so many of the same experiences before we came together early in our careers. You know, I I had that same experience in Punta Gorda with those condos. You're putting down 10 grand for basically an option um, to to close on it when when it's done. And at that time, the market was doing this in Florida when I was doing them. Right. And so I was getting free money, basically. Mm -hmm. And then I got out and I watched everyone else get burned. Because the building where I was doing it was done. People Luckily, think it's not going to change. Luckily. They think that that when it's going up, that they're just going to continue to ring the register. Yeah. And I mean, I thought that earlier in my career here in Indianapolis right. too, before we had the mortgage meltdown and sure, you know, everything everything changed com- at that point. Compared to the properties we own here in Indy during that time, which which we probably still have some of the same um, ones from back then. We 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 change properties so much it's hard to, hard to know. We've got a few long long ones, but. Those properties didn't have that experience. It didn't matter in a lot of ways what the market did. It really didn't matter. They were long-term holds. They pretty much held their value even in the darkest of dark times. Um, they did. You know. And the fact that sales weren't very popular, or popular is a bad word, basically impossible during yeah. the mortgage meltdown was probably one of the greatest things that happened to us in our career. And we held those properties. We right. weren't taking money out of them. We just stayed the course. And our Indianapolis properties in our consistent, boring mm-hmm. market, you know, really paid off. Um, so, you know, just summing up the first point, consistency, um, very stable, yep. you know, market, you know, is ideal. One it, with the yep. roller coaster ride, try to stay away from the heavy volatility. Right now, it's hard to say pick a market that has four to five percent appreciation because none of them have that. They're all higher right now. Um, all the good markets have it above that. But if you look at historic levels of appreciation, that four to five percent, 
And you can pull these charts up online. You can do simple Google searches. And if you look at these markets, if the market chart looks like this over the last 25 years, that's not a good consistent cash flow market for you. You want a line that's just flat across. So there, that's, that's number one. Number two is um, a very diverse and robust jobs market. And I think the key word there is probably diverse. Um, right now, pretty much all the job markets are robust, despite, you know, the chaos of the last few years or year, year and a half. Um, so you the, talk about this a lot whenever we're at our, our sales conferences and whatnot. Yeah. And I always think you do such a good, good job. Dive into kind of the different markets, the different job markets that we have here within Indy. And when investors are looking at other markets, you know, look for not the same segments that we're going to talk about in Indianapolis, but just provide a picture of the diversity. And, you know, just so our listeners know, look for a diverse job, you know, market where in whatever location, whatever city you're investing in. Right. So, so Indianapolis has four job sectors and, and I'll quickly explain the four real briefly. It's not that important. What's more important is that your city has more than just one. Um, Memphis, More primary, big, big sectors, right. job mm -hmm. sectors. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Memphis is known as a really good cash flow city for rental investments. It, it doesn't check this box, though. This is the one hit on Memphis, which is its economy really is based on logistics, kind of around FedEx's mm -hmm. largest hub based there. Um, so not, not to just knock Memphis, but I just wanted to kind of compare a city like Indianapolis to some of the other cash flowing markets on the lower end for this factor. Barbecue is pretty awesome. Though. Oh, it's good. And I love the city. <laughs> I've had some great Beale trips Street there. and barbecue, man. I've had some great trips. But you're right though. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of it is, is centered around, you know, just that, you know, huge FedEx up. It is. And, and so, you know, when you look at, markets, there's there's really the job sectors that you want to look at. You can dig deeper and find out they have big employers and all of that. But the truth is, is as long as there's kind of a, a core diverse base. So Indianapolis has, well, everybody knows the Indy 500, the Colts and the Pacers. So I Indianapolis has the first sector is their sports industry. People don't realize that's a whole industry. You've got NCAA headquarters here. You've got CBS Sports. You've got all these things that are based here. And um, including the you know Indy 500 race teams, you've got some NASCAR teams that have moved here. So it's a whole job sector. Another sector is we're the Midwest. So of course we're going to have a manufacturing sector. It's just the Midwest. So we've got you know the Chryslers and the, all the auto plants, um, which you know because you started your career at Cintas delivering floor mats to those places. I did I was in office um, to office sales for Cintas, the uniform people. It was a fabulous job. Yeah, loved it. Um, but you got to go into these different manufacturing places. And I don't know, I think I'm, I'm, uh, you know, from a small town and I relate to um, more the blue collar person than I do the white collar person. Yeah. You, you know, finished great there. And it was just, you. it was just fun. I mean, you know, there, there's lots of interesting personalities. Yeah. It was great, but you got to see, you know, we have uh, a plant downtown that, uh, that builds chains. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's been here forever that, uh, you know, is a big thing. And I mean, I could, I could give other examples, but you know, the auto industry is, a, is the easiest one to, to right. say, cause we've got Honda, Subaru, we've got, uh, Allison to transmission yeah, Toyota going up North of here, expanding another million square feet. Correct. You, you, so anyway, that the old adage about the Midwest being a manufacturing hub, it's, it's true. It holds true in Indianapolis. And there's a lot of reasons for that. We're at the center of the city or center of the United States uh, connected by all the highways. So it makes it a good spot for that. So that's another thing to look for. You know, if it's a centralized location in the United States, that usually helps for the manufacturing sector. Just another side tip. Um, but the third uh, job sector here in Indy would be the biopharmaceutical. And it's mostly because... Eli Lilly was headquartered here, and they're one of those magnet companies. Is headquartered here. Is, right. Sorry, mm -hmm. is headquartered yep. here, and they're one of those magnet companies that brings in other phar biopharmaceutical research centers, insurance companies. They all want to be near it because there's so much business with it. Um, and then the fourth one is kind of the most, the newest one, but the most, anyone who visits Indy will understand this, or anyone who flies into Indy will know why this is, this is such a grow. They'll see this with their own eyes on approach to land, mm -hmm. which is the logistics. So FedEx, we built a new airport. FedEx took over the last one. 
And when we built that new airport, all the land right around there was real cheap because it's pretty far from downtown. Mm-hmm. And so it all is. these manu- or, or sorry, all these logistics companies, Amazon, they bought up warehouse space. So as you're coming in, it feels like you're flying for 10 minutes over warehouses coming to the new airport. Because you are. Yeah. I mean, it's they're everywhere out there. Yeah. So it's uh, the, the next sector is the logistics and Amazon and warehousing. Yeah, we have... I think around the city we have three major Amazon hubs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Everything's going to be Amazon. One on the south side whenever I'm traveling to our uh, properties in southern Indiana. I, I pass by it, and it's, you know, it's tens of thousands of square feet. You know, it's, so, uh, so those are the factors for Indy, and I just use those for examples. When you're looking at other markets that you want to invest in, just make sure there's they're, they're not just based on maybe one, because if there's a, f- a failure in that – that can really crush a market. Um, you know, that that's the big picture for picking each kind of state and the city. So, yeah, having a diverse job market within the market you right. know, that, that, that you're investing in is very important. Uh, I mean, we saw it. It's rebounded since, but we saw it in D- Detroit. Right. You know, uh, whenever we had the economic collapse, everything was around, you know, auto manufacturing, and, and it really struggled you know, for a while. Yeah. We went uh, up there recently for a conference and I couldn't believe how beautiful the city was, mm-hmm. you know, cause it, I mean, it was hit hard again. They, they didn't have that diversity that you want to look for when you're buying this, but boy, is the city beautiful. I was shocked. It was gorgeous. It's rebounded a lot. Yeah. Um, when it, it's a neat city. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed my time there. We, right before the, uh, before COVID hit, we had a sales conference in Cleveland. Yeah. And I no, had extremely low expectations going into it. We were gorgeous. staying downtown, and it was fabulous. It was, I mean, it was gorgeous. amazing. Um, we had a blast. Yeah, you know, we had, had lots we got of to activities get out on the water. with investors. And it felt like being in the ocean, but you're in the Midwest. Yeah. It was just awesome. it was awesome. It was um, awesome. Yeah, so that, that's another good point too, which is um, that kind of brings us to our third point, which is you want to look for cities with high affordability ratings and uh, U.S. News list these each year, um, you know, the markets. And it's funny because we just touched on a couple of those, but in the top uh, 10 every year are the same sit, uh, same places, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the places that affordability is really high. So there, there's a reason we liked those cities beyond just that they're cool. They're, they're We like to look at cities for their affordability and, uh, you know, attractiveness for investments. Um, but you know, that this step is step three, which is to find a city that has high affordability index and you're not going to be in sexy cities. This kind of goes back to point one, which is most of these affordability cities, they're going to be pretty static cities. So it ties back into number one, but, uh, us news has, has a great report where you can look on there. That's a decent place to start. You know, India is always in every time is in the top 10 because we have such a great job space, but it's very cheap to live here too, you know? So the, the other ones seem to kind of come and go a little bit, but pretty much it pinpoints right back here, right? And they're not as, I mean, the cities that we, that we recommend the markets that we're discussing. Yeah. They're not as sexy as you know, some of the major, you know, markets, but then again, you know, we just talked about, you know, going to Detroit and going to Cleveland and how much fun we had. And, right. You know, I, I'm a, I love Indianapolis. Um, you know, we, we've got, a lot to do, if you ask me. Maybe if you're from uh, L.A. and come in here, maybe it's not quite the same. We don't have a beach and don't have an ocean and don't have that beautiful weather and all the time. They can only do one thing per day because it takes four hours in the car to go do, do that one thing. Correct. Well, <laughs> the, well the answer you know, here in Indianapolis is always funny. If someone comes in from out of town, we're like, well, how, how long does it take you to get downtown? Oh, about 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, how long does it take you to get out mm-hmm. west to, like, the racetrack? Ah, right. oh, 20 minutes. Right. You know, the answer yeah. is 20 minutes, right. you know, to everything. So but as they're picking you know, houses a lot of the time, they right. say, well, how far is this one from downtown? Because I want to make sure we attract the, you know, people in that jobs market. I'm like, 20 minutes. Uh, well, what about this one? 20 minutes. Correct. <laughs> you know, it's literally <laughs> living here. If we get caught up in traffic for an extra 10 minutes, oh. we're about to lose our minds. Yeah. Like road what, rage. Uh, what is going on? Steam coming I've been out here of the ears. for 10 minutes, you know, and... I tell a lot of people the story where we were speaking at a, at a conference out in Los Angeles. I knew where you were going. You know, we were speaking at 6 p.m. in Irvine. Right. About 45 minutes is what it took us to get there from the airport whenever we got there. And 
our wives were on the trip with us. So Tish and I, we decided, well, we're going to do a celebrity homes tour. And it got out at like three o'clock. I'm like, okay, well, it's three hours, you know, before we have to. How many miles was it? Uh, 40 miles. I think it was like 30. Okay. And we get, we get in this traffic. There wasn't an accident. There wasn't nothing. It was just, just three o'clock, four o'clock afternoon traffic. And I called you at like four. I'm like, dude, I ain't making it. Like, I mean, I'm still, I'm still way out. You know, we've just been at a standstill and there's motorcycles flying past you through the middle of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, car lanes. And, you know, I got, I ended up getting there like five minutes late and just, Walking onto stage as you were yeah. there, but I just assumed uh, you'd played hooky all day and were just drunk by then. You know, you and your wife were out partying at the beach. Was, you didn't want to come. Far in. from that. I mean, uh, <laughs> we did. Uh, we did get to see uh, the likes of uh, you know Justin Timberlake's home and uh, Quentin Tarantino yeah. and Britney Spears and all these all these celebrities. It was it was cool, but that traffic, like I just I couldn't imagine someone wanting that. You know, all the time. And Tough. Um, it's one of the markets that we would not recommend right. um, investing in. Although, you know, everyone knows Los Angeles, you know, very, uh, you know, sexy place to be. But that's, um, a, that's a good point, too, which is, you know, one of the other kind of little tidbits is we believe you should be focused on probably a market that has a top 20 size city in it. So, that's a good point. Um, you know, so... Y- but you can take out like the top four and just correct because they don't. Them off so the you know you also want the market you choose to have within it one of those top twenty cities. Now mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that you can't shouldn't focus on other secondary markets within that. Like for example, so if you pick Indiana because of all the stats look good and the numbers work, it doesn't mean you just have to buy Indianapolis. There's other markets within in within Indiana that you know, folks like us really focus on mm-hmm. that are in some ways stronger than Indianapolis, our main market. We're in Evansville, we're in Anderson, we're in Muncie. That's where we're putting a lot of our money. Those secondary markets within the stable market sometimes are, have the most attractive properties and the most attractive returns. And that's it's okay. important to look at. It's important to look at those secondary markets because you, know, you say Evansville and Evansville for us, you know, we were shocked whenever we really did a lot of research seven, eight years ago and found out that the homes are actually worth more in Evansville right. than Indianapolis and the rents are higher. Um, and Evansville has a very strong, you know, job base because it's an Ohio river town. There's lots of transportation. There's auto plants down there. There's yeah. big, uh, very big quarries. jobs uh, market, very diverse. Mm-hmm. That part was shocking even to me looking at that job space. And a lot of it was the tax, I guess the taxes in Indiana, for businesses were superior to Kentucky and it's literally, there's a river in between Kentucky and Evansville. So I guess a lot of those jobs moved over and that's what started that besides the fact that it's on a river town that feeds mm-hmm. Chicago and all of that. So you've got manufacturing and all those barges, you go down there and there's barge after barge delivering stuff. I didn't, that's another thing. I didn't realize how much, how many things are delivered by barge in this country yeah. and, until you invest in a market like that. And you see, wow, that's an actual whole job sector. Correct. So, so look at those secondary markets. Um, but you know, you, you don't want to just be in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, in a market that doesn't have a big city, you know, there, there's some, I don't want to throw any places directly under the bus, but you know, pick a market that has one of those within it and all of those, you know, Let's let's go through this. Consistency, diverse jobs market, um, affordability, and then um, you know if you can pick a city within there, if it, the market has a city like an indie in it, right? Then you're going to be fine. But uh, I think the most important one is to pick a stable market. You know, consistency. You know, I, I agree. But then looking at like the four points, they're all so important. Uh, yeah, consistency is is key. I mean, you, you don't want to be subject to having these peaks and valleys where you get into a situation and you need to, to exit your investment and you're at the bottom of a real estate cycle or a market cycle and there's literally nothing for you to do. Um, there's nothing you can do. We also um, don't believe in trying to time the market because it's almost impossible to do well. It's impossible to do it perfect and it's nearly impossible to do it well at all. We just believe in investing 
we always feel like now is the best time to buy. I know that seems crazy, but as far as we're concerned, when's the best time to buy? Now. It's always the best time to buy. There's always opportunity out there somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, and if you're going to be doing this, this is a long-term play. So trying to get cute over, you know, is the market at its top? Is it going to drop down? You're just delaying the inevitable, which is you got to buy something and get it cash flowing, get it paid off, you know, so. Which is what we're all about. Yeah. Very sound real estate investing, no flash, um, long-term, you know, buy and hold real estate. We've seen what it could do for us and our clients, and that's what that's what we believe in. But, you know, it's, it's not very popular a lot of times in the real estate investing community because people – get tied up in, in wanting the flash of it. And uh, quite frankly, people get greedy. And, yeah. you know, I, I just always go back to boring. Right. You know, keep it boring and have a long-term um, investment mindset is so critical. And I would say it's, it, it is popular in the investment world as far as the people who are successful. It's not as popular on the Internet to read about. Um, you know, Correct. So... You know, we feel it's the way to build that wealth. Um, these Picking the right market is very important. Um, you know, finding a group like us within the market after you pick it. You know, interview different uh, investment companies. Most of them have at least a couple companies like ours within them. And, uh, match and you know, we, we know a lot of people yeah. in different markets. We're happy we, to tell you about we, them. That if, we like. There's, there's yeah. markets that we like and... Some that we don't. We've been at these these seminars for many years, and I mean, there's people there in different markets that I can't wait to see. Right. You know, uh, every time we go somewhere. For um, sure. And when you know, we have clients in, you know, like, like oh well, we're looking at uh, Jacksonville. I'm like oh, have you talked to Brian? And right. you know, like, we we know the other good markets, so we're not scared to share how we feel about those markets. We've touched on a few of them, you know, today. It's okay to pick more than one market too. You know, this is kind of step one, picking that market, but it's okay to pick a couple. You know, you don't want to be spread out where you have one house here, one house in Jacksonville, one house in Memphis, and one house in Cincinnati. You know, that's Mm -hmm. too spread out. You know, maybe three in Indy and three in Jacksonville, Florida, or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to fall in love with two markets, three markets, you know. Like we said, there's good operators in in most of those markets. And, And again, you can contact us directly, and we can... We can tell you our thoughts on a market that you're looking at. We're happy to share our thoughts. We're pretty open and honest about what we like and don't like about different uh, markets. I stay pretty in tune with them. I'm a data geek. so I, he, You're just a geek. I yeah, take just, the data <laughs> out of it. You're just a dork. It's amazing. How, uh, and I'm, I'm in the same boat. It's like, just, this is, we, I feel like I'm back at home with my teenagers. I'm telling you, I, I, it, it literally went from... I heard a Jeff Foxworthy thing, like, you know, I, I went from one day cruising in a Camaro, jamming to Led Zeppelin, to now wearing, uh, you know, having a dad bod and, you mm-hmm. know, cruising down the street, listening Just to like Yankee, that. or listening to um, the cow jumped over the moon right. with my with my, with my my kids, you know. It's, it's a, a light switch. It really is. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's something else. I'm that cheesy dad joke guy now. Oh, for sure. And, you know, you give me a bunch of crap because I always say I got to go tinkle. Yeah. You know, you yeah, know. you've got the dad lingo down. <laughs> it's awful. A room full of adults. <laughs> yeah. You stand up, you're like, All right, everybody, I got to go tinkle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he has kids. It's it's so <laughs> true. But uh, one of these days, I reserve the right to be be cool again. I just don't know when. Um, yeah. That's gonna happen. It's hard to do when you know. Literally tonight, I'm I'm taking I'm going to ballet practice. So Sweet. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, Those it's are something. such fun times. They're fun though. times. They're fun times. But anyhow, our show for today: picking the right real estate market to invest in. Very important. We're happy to to guide you, but then also take what we've said today, apply it to any market that you're potentially looking at. Again, hit the subscribe button down below. We look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. Until then, we're the homeboys. Happy investing.